now. Uh, but yeah, we were saying you came off your uh, your St. Lotus event. Um, obviously, you've been tracking those, but the Discord drafts are a different animal, and we know there's some differences there. The, the one that I was told about walking into it, because I haven't done one of these in a long time, was that cantrips get picked really high. So that's yeah. something that I, I was ready for, and I know uh, that fetch lands get picked a little lower in Discord, and cantrips get picked higher. So everyone's in blue. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the thing I knew walking in, but yeah, let, let's see kind of what happens here. So, yeah. uh, hey, Hyphen, how you doing? Uh, this is gonna be a fun one because Hyphen is actually my last match of the VRD. So uh, we, get oh, to, nice. we, get, we get to commentate on this uh, this draft as it happens. So here, right. here's the fancy draft simulator we're gonna be walking through today. Uh, so let's give this a shot and see how well it works. All right, so in first seat, we have Talon taking Ancestral Recall, and I'm in second seat taking Black Lotus. Uh, obviously, uh, this is going pretty fast right now, but yeah. so it'll, it'll give us a breather here now. So, Okay, so my question is, when Talon took Recall, mm -hmm. how happy were you? Was it immediate, oh man, I'm on Lotus? Uh, were you planning on getting Lotus Seat 2? I anticipated there was a very good chance I get Lotus Seat 2, so I... I basically was like, okay, I drafted second seat. There's a good chance I'm going to be drafting Doomsday. Because that, that was my thought, as always. I want to be in first oh, or second yeah. seat so I get Lotus and I can play Doomsday. Because I, do, I don't think the deck works without Lotus. Yeah, um, definitely not. So, so that was absolutely when I saw that what I seat number was. I was like, okay, I'm going to take Lotus and I'm going to play Doomsday. If I got Ancestral, I'd probably try to draft Fish again. But Yeah, fair. Um, other things we're seeing, Hyphenated taking Mana Crypt over the Moxon. That's not uncommon anymore, but it is, uh, it is historically unusual. Yeah, uh, it's something that I feel like, you know, it's the constant Soul Ring conversation. Would you take Soul Ring or Recall? And Marrow always says he'd take Soul Ring. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Mar Mana Crypt is the most generically powerful rock you can get. Doesn't lock you into a color, lets you just take the best pick available in rounds two and three, which I think is a really good strat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, exactly, hyphen two manas. It's twice as much as one. I'm just going to pause here for a second to give us a <laughs> breather. Um, yeah. So yeah, we see Mana Crypt into Force of Will, which is obviously like a big signal of where he wants to go. Uh, yeah. We see Mox Sapphire into Time Walk. I was baffled that Time Walk was about to get back to me, and that was the pick I was super excited for. Um, yeah. But Ever took it. I think Hyphen would have taken it if it hadn't got. So there was no chance it was ever getting to me. But I had a brief moment. Urza Saga and second pick is pretty exciting to me, though. That's unusual. That's one that's been creeping up a lot, uh, getting higher and higher every draft. Uh, you know, Ragavan was kind of always that top three MH2. Mm -hmm. seeing it in those first few rounds. I've been really happy to see Urza's Saga start going up because to me it's like, it almost fits in the same slot as like a Karn. It's something that lets you get a generically powerful colorless package into whatever deck you want to play. It doesn't necessarily shoehorn you into something. So I like it. I think it's a really good pick and I think it's until recently been very undervalued. Yeah, I think if I if I knew I wanted Urza Saga, I might go Soul Ring first, but that's just because of the kind of the great synergy there. But again, yeah. I don't know if STI was really locked into there at that point. Mm -hmm. Brandon getting Mox Pearl into Soul Ring, obviously like we don't know, but Hate Bears is the is the first thing that I think of there. Soul Ring's oh, a little yeah, weird. Sure. Yeah, Time Vault Karn. You're in artifacts. Yeah. Yep. And Hagen getting the Ruby and Jet, which is interesting as well. Yeah. Uh the I think the 8 seed is very undervalued because you can get double mocks there, or double power usually, so you can lock yourself in pretty well. Cool. Oh, apparently I just found out our fifth drafter is actually pronounced Stee, so good to know there. Stee. Okay. Apologies. Yeah, that's that's a little less uh, uh, problematic when you start thinking about what other initials <laughs> STX stand for. So. Yeah. Um, Significantly. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's kick the let's kick the, the timer off again. Yeah, let's see what we got. Um, so Ancestral under Ragavan is like makes me think Splinter Twin might just be a blue red temple list, something like that. But Merc Tide, something, yeah. I took Vampiric because uh, I, I, I was You have to. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know how good um, the Vampiric versus Demonic is. I know Mason really thinks Demonic's better, but for me at least I uh, I like Vampiric a little more and Yeah. And I think those two work real well together once you have once you're going for Doomsday. Oko out of the third seed. That's, I mean, Oko is the perfect spot in the third position. That sounds about right to yeah. me. Um, when I'm sitting at the spot at the table, I'm hoping that Teferi makes it back around to me and I can be Esper. Uh, but yeah. that's that's kind of where my brain's at. Uh, Mox Diamond. Interesting. I think the only thing Mox Diamond gets taken incredibly early in these Discord drafts. Um, I, I looked this up before I was drafting it and I was like, okay, I'm never going to get Mox Diamond, which is sad yeah. because it works pretty well in my deck. But 
people kind of just draft it and throw it in a random deck uh, in these drafts? Yeah, I've noticed that, and I've noticed, you know, hearkening back to our discussion about this paper meta, Fast Bond gets taken much later in the Discord drafts, I feel, than it does in the in-person drafts. Unless Steve is there, apparently, because it's just took like a third. Yeah. <laughs> well, e even third pick, I mean, our last couple of St. Lotuses, sure. it's been one and two every time. Uh, and I've seen some of the Discord ones where it's like five or six. And Brandon there with Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo MD uh, takes Tinker away from Juchems, who uh, I can't, I cannot imagine wouldn't have taken Tinker a third pick there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I I like that Mr. Hagen here has gone for generic land package. Mm -hmm. I think uh, strip mine just is like, bonkers. Uh, yeah, it's so good in this format because again, Jew for example has Academy. Academy probably is the straw that stirs the drink of that deck. Mm -hmm. So pretty good. Of course. Tomb pretty early though. I, I don't know if if it goes earlier yeah. in these drafts, but. And there's that Teferi that was a gut punch for me. I didn't anticipate it would make a round, but if it did, I would have been yeah. happy. Yeah, two gems of the Academy. Features, the Academy, I feel like, is really, like, it's signaling exactly where he's going. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, if, if the Vault and Karn 1 and 2 weren't there, the Academy definitely is, which is why I the Faden pick here, I think, is incredibly relevant. Because Ever hasn't signaled what deck we're going for yet. Like, we know we're blue, but also now we have a main boardable card that can answer at least one deck outright, uh, just by being able to steal whatever artifact he has that's relevant. That's fair. It still feels incredibly... When I saw the deck fade, I'm like, that feels like an incredibly early pick. Um, oh, and, for sure. And also, like, jumping right into blue-red when, when you already have Ragavan and Spell Pierce uh, ripped off the table feels like... I don't know. It's bold. I, I'm not saying it's wrong, but yeah. deck fade, in my mind, is not that good. Yeah. Uh, I agree, Hyphen. I... Tinker in VRD is like the, it's it's the play everyone goes for, right? You mm -hmm. just you got to do it, and uh, it's kind of overrated. Well, and hard combo decks are also like with the kind of the way that the meta has slowed down and become creature centric, and everything's about disruption. Hard combo is yeah. really hard to get through. So, I actually agree with what Hyphen just said that the deck Faden probably would not have been taken so early if there was not clearly signaled mm -hmm. another blue red drafter. That makes sense. I like this mana drain a lot from Hyphen. Obviously, it's really powerful. I take yeah. Chrome Mox just because I, I see that basically like fast mana gets taken ridiculously early here. I think Chrome Mox yeah. is actually like 11th pick on average in in these Discord drafts, but I, I bumped it up my pick order because I really needed something as a zero mana. Yeah. And Lotus Petal gets bafflingly low here. Lotus Petal is like 19th according to my database. Uh, yeah. So I could float that one for a while. Yeah, I this when I watched this draft live, like, in the Discord, I noticed that Hyphenated, now in hindsight, basically ended up with Mason's deck from the last St. Lotus. Correct, yeah. Um, this is why I'm so terrified of playing against it. I think it's my worst matchup. Like, double, uh, oh, double easily, force is really bad. Easily, yeah. easily. Oh, Steve with the Twister, yeah. Yeah, the Hull Breacher Twister, and I ever said that he picked the Narset because he didn't want someone to get Hull Breacher Narset into all yeah. the wheels, so. yeah. I think that's still like an early pickup for the Narset in my mind, but that is uh, that is the reason. Yeah, it's it's early, but it's also like we've discussed sometimes. You know, what's a pick that's going to be contested? Sometimes I have to take that a little bit early if I have to have it for my deck. Sure. And I think that's what happened here. That makes sense. Stoneforge getting taken fifth round is, is definitely interesting to me as well. I don't think that's a that's not a usual thing, but I mean, Stoneforge no. is really good. I, I also think, uh, you know, Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo MD over there takes a lot of St. Lotus into the Discord drafts, so kind of as an agent of chaos, it's very interesting to see. Uh, also, Hagen, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, Pris oh, that's Prismatic Ending, sorry. Vista, best fetch land in the format. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, Pris Prismatic close. Ending, if we look at what it's drafted with, uh, you can kind of see like, these cards have Hagen printed all over them, right? Mm. They definitely do. It is a really early ending to me. I mean, I think it's a clear signal of where he's going, but yeah, uh, and which is notably not where I'm going. So I, don't, I just stopped kind of caring about it. Yeah, the vault getting taken as well. So now that we have three clearly blue red drafters at the table. Yeah. Misstep is an interesting one. I'm not sure how good that card is, and I keep saying interesting. I'm gonna try to stop myself from doing that. Uh, Misstep, I think, is a card that gets uh, that gets drafted too high in VRD because of the vintage roots, and in VRD it's just okay. Like, there, you'll have, always have one drop, but I don't think it's necessarily the kind of soul crusher it is in Vintage. That's a good point, Higgin. Yeah, I, well, and I think between, because this is the constant question, right, is VRD more competitive EDH or is it more Vintage? 
Misstep is good in both of those formats. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's that good in VRD. I agree. Backing off what you were saying, yeah. Although, also, right after it, three one-mana cantrips get taken by three players, so... Correct, and that was where I, I was like, I definitely need something, so I guess I'll take Brainstorm, but it's the one I want least of those three. Yeah. Uh, and that also kind of forces me into... I, I then want to get in the fight over fetches that I don't want to be in, because my deck is, spoiler, going to run Gush, and if I'm running Gush, I don't want to be playing a whole bunch of fetches. Yeah, fetches are real bad with Gush. Uh, I also love how prone to the land run the Discord drafts have gotten. And this is something we saw a lot in St. Lotus, was as soon as, in this case, uh, we see Prismatic Vista, and then Kems takes Volcanic, and that round Talon took Tarn, all of a sudden people are drafting all of their fetches. Right. Um, it, it doesn't quite... I mean, we'll, we'll see, right? But at least up to now, it's, it's not its not everybody, right? There's kind of like a few of them are yeah. coming off. The best ones are coming off. Um, but we're not seeing the off-blue ones going yet. Yeah. No Mesas, nothing like that. Besaju, this is an early Besaju, right? Seventh pick, is that where it goes at this point? Besaju. I feel like that's in very early, but I also think that if Stee knew that, obviously, we're green here, probably with the Emerald, we can right. go into a bug list, and we're seeing at least one artifact deck, uh, it's probably worth it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, uh, we know Hyphen's in green already with the uh, with the Misty and previously the Oka. Yeah, uh, Hagen says this is where it goes usually, so. Okay. Source uh, of Solid Solitude. Yeah. All the generically good removal. Yep. Uh, again, Hagen all over it. Yeah. The top, I... <laughs> the top ones are exactly those three that he took together. It's yeah. Funny. The top made me a little sad. Obviously, with Doomsday, that's a pretty nice one to have. Yeah. Urza Lord High Artificer. That's a card that went undrafted in the last VRD. In the last St. Lotus, I mean. Yeah. Uh, it's a card that I think you really, really have to build around. It's not generically good on its own, unless you have Esper Sentinel and stuff like that to kind of back it up. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you need to have other artifacts, uh, but once you have, like, I don't yeah. know, if you have like, one other artifact in play, it's pretty good. <laughs> the fact that you can basically tap out for it and still have mana up after it resolves is very good to me. Uh, I actually agree with that assessment, Steve, and I think I may actually take it over Fast Bond as the best green card in the format. Depending on the meta, obviously, but in a vacuum, Fast Bond probably is just the best. Yeah. Uh, and that makes sense, Hyphen, to have that. So I think it is because it, the fact that it can't be interacted with is so much more impactful to me um, just because, like, that's incredible. Oko, you can resolve. Sure, you get one activation out of it. But if there is some problem artifact, if you've got a cage out and I'm on Reanimator, you don't really have a way to interact with a channeled Boseju, which I think is huge because there's so many good generic sideboard cards that are colorless or enchantments like Deafening Silence, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> if one of the colors is blue, that doesn't count. Yeah, Fair. I, I think I like Oko substantially more, I think. Uh, but that, that's mostly because the artifact and creature like you, you're always gonna have a target whereas Viseju is gonna be a, just a basic land in a lot of matchups um, that's fair yeah but I mean we're, we're kind of comparing very different things right Viseju is yeah, an answer yeah. that you can you can interact with oh. you don't in in unfair matchups Oko is a card that will win you the game by itself in yeah, fair matchups. it's a clock yeah, yeah. exactly um, we have the the original duels run happening there's underground sea tropical island we had I think one early, yeah, we had the Volcanic in round six oh, as yeah. well. So this is the blue run again, mm -hmm. so... And we have Pyro and Reb. Yeah. Red Elemental Blast can't possibly be this high, usually. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's kind of kind of surprising. Yeah. I take Dark Ritual here, despite the fact there's no other black drafters at the table, because I just, like, really want to force people out of black, and that was one of the cards I was thinking of, that if somebody wants to get into black... Thoughtseize is the card that obviously like is floating very late here, but yeah, I, I don't care if somebody takes Thoughtseize because I can take Duress or Inquisition. Like all three of those cards are roughly the same to me, and Dark Ritual is a card that could force someone into deep black. So I wanted to cut people off black, and that that mm -hmm. was my thought. It's just like what cards could possibly force someone to draft Liliana the Veil, and Dark Ritual was number one on the list. Uh, also, hyphen, I want to give you a shout out for drafting one of my favorite threats in the format in Hex Drinker. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, Dove in the Hand of Control, I think, is criminally underrated in this format as well. I obviously know, you know, Dr. PP's been a stand for that card for a while, but that card's really good. Yep. 
Dovin has uh, uh, is incredibly annoying for me. It made me lose a match against Brandon that I probably could have played through it if I had played better, but uh, apparently yeah. Pact of Negation costs one mana when Dovin's in play, and I did not remember that as I was playing him. Yeah. Uh, Steven on the Thalia. I, I love Thalia, and also Bone Crusher Giant is like very strong, so uh, that seems like a card that we have other people that would want to draft as well. Like the Thalia, yeah. I, I don't see the blue Clearly there's nobody else in it. white. Yeah. But there's multiple potentially blue red decks that may want a card like Bone Crusher Giant. Totally. And then, yeah, we, we don't have any other white aggressive decks that would want Thalia, at least now. Mystical Were Tutor you was a with the Mystical Tutor pick. That's the first one on here that I was like, I hoped to get this card and didn't get it. That This is okay. exactly Mystical Tutor is my next pick, and it was the first one I got mad about. Yeah. Um, I, I think with Vampire Demonic, I'm not like terribly upset, but it, yeah, it would have been nice. Yeah. And this is also where I'm kind of like, I have Brainstorm, I have all these tutor effects, it's going to be really helpful. And here's more of the fetches. At this point, I'm thinking, I have Brainstorm, I need a fetch as well. Uh, yeah. And starting to get... Uh, oh, okay, no, I, I, go, I go for the Serum Visions here, just to yeah. shore up that. Because yeah, I think I have four yeah. cantrips in my like starting list that I want to get to, so I don't want to be getting down to peaks. Like, yeah. Nope. I think the interesting thing here to me is that we're at pick 10 and we clearly have basically two of the same archetype. Drafting two seats apart, it seems like the blue-red tempo is clearly what we're going for. Um, because to me, EI's a tempo card. Faden's a tempo card. Bolt is a tempo card. And then we have Darcy, Swift Spear, Days, Snap, all that stuff also says tempo to me. Yeah. Uh, which is very interesting to see neither one go off of it totally sylvan library is, is my pick for uh best mono green card uh, even ahead of fast bond but i, I think that I, it, you, yeah. you kind of need to be in a deeper green deck for it to work and it's a certain type of yeah deck. when ever took underworld breach i literally was texting you and like three other people just freaking freaking the f out I remember that. and i'm yeah. just like i'm gonna get sniped someone's gonna take Thassa's oracle this turn i'm hating myself for taking bloodstained mire with Thassa's oracle because my entire deck has no other win conditions in it yeah. And then Breach gets... And I guess this is where Ever kind of signaled we're going for something else entirely. Totally. So. I'm still not entirely... I don't even know if Underworld Breach made the final cut in Ever's list, but it definitely... Yeah. And then the LED freaked me out as well. Like, that's a card that I wanted but didn't need in my list. It was very much, like, when playtesting it ahead of time, I mostly used it as a uh, as a one-mana ramp with an offer you can't refuse. I would counter my own LED. Um, oh yeah that's uh, fair yeah because yeah. It's, it's just like i'm not gonna play infernal tutor uh, like there are yogmoth will lines that are it's nice with but my deck is so much mana production with the dark ritual and black lotus that i wasn't terribly upset about it yeah that's fair uh unholy heat i think is criminally underpicked yeah i agree i think that's just it's new and a lot of people yeah. aren't super familiar with it yet yeah mary's guile is a very good one uh Ooh. obviously poor man's sylvan library but i like it yeah, it, it, it's so much worse. But yeah, I know that's the pet card of Jeff Blyden in older formats. Yeah. <laughs> it is a Blyden special. See, Enlightened uh, Tutor is a pretty good one. So Stee is really signaling, like, we're going to be we're gonna be in white uh, for the first time, right? This is the first thing we're seeing out of that? Yeah, this is, this is the first the first player besides Hagen to draft a white card. Well, and Brandon, but Brandon's are very much not. Like, yeah. They're leaning in a different direction. Yeah. Library of Alexandria going 12th. That feels low to me, but I mean, I think Library has traditionally gone higher in Discord drafts. I also don't... I I beat this horse to death when we've done commentary for St. Lotus. I don't like Library in the format. But... Yeah, I think you're pretty wrong, um, but that's, that's reasonable. <laughs> that's, so... that's fair. It's... I played Stacks and Vintage, so Library never did anything for me, except on turn one. Like, that was it. Eh. This Thought Seize Inquisition. Uh, I think there were shots fired uh, posted in the chat, and Talon was obviously very excited about that. Steven yeah. actually wanted these cards. I didn't realize that, but I had been floating them because, again, I didn't care which of the three I got. Um, and I was pretty sure no one else was going to take him to Turok. Yeah. But yeah, I got my third one. Um, it's going to be annoying against the, all the creature decks, but at the end of the day, like, I just want to check to make sure you can't beat me when I combo off. Yeah, for sure. I'm loving Hyphen's list here with this Vendillion click popping up. Yeah. Uh... It really reminds me of the old Snowblade lists 
Mm -hmm. Obviously, minus stone blades and stone forge is gone, but like I'm basically going to control you out of the game, stick a single threat, and beat you to death with a single threat. And I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I um, can't. Yeah, it's, it's a Delver list, right? It's, it's it, If you squint hard enough, it's anything the Delver list, and this one definitely is. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing the, the kind of the lands that are third order picks going at this point. Yeah. Transmute Artifact is a super exciting one out of two gems. Also, I don't know how to pronounce two gems, so I know you're in the chat. If you want to tell me how to actually pronounce your name so I stop embarrassing myself, that'd be yeah. cool. Uh, Steve, I agree. Library is very low cost in a two color deck. Reality Smasher is so good, and especially at this point, you can just float the, like Eric's Eldrazi list forever. Uh, based on what we're seeing here. Tezzeret's Seeker was one I was surprised wasn't taken in the last St. Lotus at all. That is interesting, yeah. That, I mean, it's kind of like you can take it whenever you want to if you are in the uh, Time Vault deck. No one else is going to want that card. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, in the Time Vault deck, it seems like an auto-include to me. But Yeah. For anyone uh, following along at home that is not actually in the draft, <laughs> here's the I'm going to post the link to the spreadsheet as well. I feel like we're behind on that. Ledger Shredder, this is this also feels late for Ledger Shredder. Uh, I think it is late for Ledger, Shredder, Ledger Shredder, Juke Kent. Like that. Okay, that works. Yeah, it's just, it seems late. Uh, JVP, I think, is probably hot take top five walker in the format. Uh, it's not a walker, it's just a yeah. creature that gives flashback, but we'll count it as a walker. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel confident saying top five, but it's definitely incredibly good. I don't know if it's top five or top ten, but I, it's one of those two. I guess it, in the decks where it's insane, it's insane compared yes. to others. And there's a new one getting that just got printed a blue black version of it that some yeah. people think is better, but we'll see. Um, I take back to negation here because I it's super important. It's like one of my top three cards for this deck. Uh, I just desperately need it when I go off because once you resolve an ad nauseum, it's really strong on its own. And yeah, um, yeah. and here's the spoiler. Also must include. It's yeah. This is the first time I'm trying to draft a Luris deck. Uh, given that I'm playing Black Lotus and very few other permanents. Um, Luris felt pretty good as a companion. The reanimate, that, that actually was one of the things that I was, when I was freaking out and talking to people about, like, what do I do if Oracle gets taken? My yeah. my plan was basically to backdoor into reanimator. So. Yeah. And here's the Lutri from Ever. Well, it's, it's interesting that Talon started drafting Black after getting probably the three best threats in the Is It list. All of a sudden, sure. now we're shifting out of those two colors to something that appears to be a little bit more open. Um, Lion Sash, I actually I don't like that card as much as Scoos. Maybe I'm wrong in BRD, I just don't like it as much. Uh, it's tutorable with the Oracle, or with the... Uh with Stoneforge. Stoneforge, yeah. So I think that, that pushes it over, but... Oh, for sure, yeah. It, clearly, I don't think anyone else is taking the card right now, so... Yeah, no, definitely not. Lelia is bonkers. Yeah. Uh, here's an interesting one that uh, Jukem's call out, taking Null Rod, uh, when clearly yeah. it's the best sideboard card against it. This is one of those, like... I, I think there's there's a whole, like, uh, either stream or article I want to write about hate picking. Um, yeah. But these two are really interesting, and I think completely fair hate picks. Uh, just given kind of how good they are. I don't ever imagine they're coming in against against anybody else, though. No. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, Steve. Please, I, I, yeah. Cult are complete. This is one of those, like, I don't know why we need to take it here, but I don't think there's... I, I don't think there's, like... We're in that middle section where it's... You're not really going to be fighting over things other than sideboard cards, so it's reasonable to shore up your list with all the things that might reason might somebody else might take from you. So, yeah, uh, that's a good point, Hagen. It seems right now we potentially have someone going into Reanimator. We have some Storm list with Thoracal, which mm -hmm. probably Doomsday if you know like the Legacy meta, and then we have uh, an under we have a Breach deck, so we potentially do have three Graveyard decks there. So. Uh, offer you can't refuse is so good. It's God. it's the card that I think ties my list together the most of anything in it. Yeah. Young, back on the young PZ plan now for Talon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of once you have a really solid blue red list, splashing into Grixis is interesting. Um, especially kind of with the, like, there's a Polluted Delta and Scalding Tarn. So presumably Watery Grave is going to be an important pickup here at some point. Yeah. 
I love that Bob pick though. That's if, if you're going to be in Grixis, Bob is a card you want in this list. Yeah. I take Energy Flux despite it not working with Lurus because I think I can't lose to two chems if I resolve it. Um, oh yeah, that's for the sure. reason I take it. Even though I yeah. just think that card, I think in general, sideboard cards are underdrafted, and that's I think one of the best ones. Yeah. Veil of Summer Hyphen agrees with me. Sideboard cards are very good, and Veil is yeah. like probably one of the, the best as well. Best? Yeah, just one of, if not the best, for sure. Correct. Yeah, it's like that Pyro, or one of the ones that I think are pet cards. Uh, I think Chill, if there's a mono red player, is probably the best one. Yeah. Uh, didn't learn that. Yeah, I still... I, I don't... I don't uh, I'm willing yeah. to let somebody waste a pick on taking my stuff. Uh, Jite, kind of shoring up, just making sure the stone forge is going to have all the meat it wants. Basalt monolith yeah. presumably is going to go infinite somehow. Uh, maybe a wake thrasher could pop up in this. So. Yeah. Badlands into Opnixilis, and there's there's Steven making the jump into black. Yeah. I also think it's interesting that the Crucible pick floated so late after the third round strip mine. Uh, but I think that's because with St. Lotus, most of the time, we have two people on some sort of list that wants one or both of those cards. Yeah, and it's uh, Wasteland is just so much worse than Crucible. We, we harp on this all the time, but it's just like substantially worse in this format. There's nobody who's not running basics, right? We don't have a Red Delver player. Yeah. Workshop? Really, Brandon? Come on. Yeah. Uh, Force, <laughs> the Force of Vigor, also criminally underrated. I mean, I, I think it is... I don't know where it should go, but it is really good. Yeah. I guess when there is an artifact deck, I there are very few cards outside of Nullrod or Oof that I would want over Force of Vigor. I'll take Energy uh, Flux all day, but I, I, I agree with your point. I think Force is yeah. way more versatile, because you Flux also bring it against, against all the combo decks. Yeah. Season Pyromancer. I don't know why that card's good, but I think it's because it's good against decks that I don't play. So like, Yeah, I don't it really is good against decks you don't play. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. I take Dothy Voidwalker. I don't. I think I've ordered it in once. I'm never gonna play it. Uh, <laughs> I, I like Brandon. I like Brandon's uh, audible here. Also, yeah. I love when people defend their choices in, in chat live, which is good. Mana confluence in the city of brass. Uh, clearly, this uh, Grixis list is gonna have mana eventually. Yeah. I think mana and confluence and city are probably my two favorite non basics in the format. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't think that but i think that it's like i understand why you're saying that yeah uh good eye pob mango horns incredible yeah true um i took my twist because i was just like scanning down my list of cards of like what are the black cards with a single pip that somebody else might take <laughs> and yeah. mind twist is somewhere on there and being able That's to like turn one mind twist for four with a lotus is pretty ridiculous real good yeah i actually got someone uh it was somebody went fast bond Land, so they had, they had played three cards or exploration land, so they had three cards out of their hand, and I just mind twisted their entire hand on turn one with a, a dark ritual. Yeah, batter skull kind of okay. Again, Stoneforge is gonna have all the choices. Yeah, Eugene, yeah, that's that's a super early one, I think, right? I mean, yeah. maybe I'm because uh, I think that's the only deck that wants it, unless there's an Eldrazi list going out, but. You know, Hagen clearly signaled we have one Eldrazi, and that's probably all we're getting. I mean, when I see that Mishra's Workshop, I don't know what Brandon's doing, though, and maybe I just want to be like, let's let's lock down my stuff. Because <laughs> yeah. Mishra's doesn't work with that card, but it does work with the cards that this card works with. That's fair. Forge combo. God, that was such a toxic vintage metagame. Yes. It, I think Forge kind of had a good splash in the pan when Jeff first drafted it, and then has fallen off and kind of fallen out of favor. But in yeah. these heavy artifact decks, it is very strong. Very good, yeah. I'm Tiger Woods. <laughs> I think we're yeah, running, I... running low on OG duels as well at this point. Yeah, we've got uh, Plat, Badlands. I think there's a Savannah floating around. Uh, I do, and I, I give props to Ever for this. There are so many lands that work just as good as a duel if you don't get your duel. It doesn't actually matter. Unless you run Gush, then I agree. Which is yeah. why I take Watery Grave. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense, yes. I also just wanted to stick it to Talon a little bit. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I really wanted to make sure I got both of the, the things that said Island on them. 
Oh, so. for sure, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, to your point, Waterlog Grove and Chiffin Reef are <laughs> exactly what you said. Uh, yeah, they're, they do the same thing. And Talon still picks up the fetch of Old Blood Crypt, so. Yeah. Has two fetches that can grab stuff, plus the city reps. I mean, his mana's gonna be fine. It's a lot of oh, yeah, early his, picks his, on mana, but. Very smooth. Yeah. I love Gush. I literally was like, when I was building this deck, uh, looking through the Gush book to see what cards I was missing from uh, lists. Because I, of course, have my Indians book on my shelf behind me. Yeah. Uh, my my favorite story about Gush was when my friend Calcaterra, rest in peace, was playing Menendian at Gen Con Vintage Champs. Stomps him with a virulent sliver. And afterwards, he goes, hey, good games. And Steven looks at him and goes, do you know who I am? He goes, no. He goes, I literally wrote the book on Gush. He goes, oh, that doesn't beat Poison. <laughs> Shakes his hand and goes. Oh, man, I love people BMing Menendian great god recall is so good yes hercules it recalls is. are hard outside to lose here but yeah and there's a savannah you're talking about so yep expedition map cryptic in this like. format is a weird one i feel like cryptic is uh, obviously it's very strong i think i like venser more than cryptic a lot of the time which makes me think that cryptic isn't as good as i think it should be yeah uh cryptic i think is good in your hard control lists uh, which obviously for Hyphen would have been great, but I also think, Hyphen, correct me if I'm wrong, you probably have enough control that you don't really need Cryptic, right. because most of the time, Dismiss does a very good Cryptic impression and is easier to cast. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Uh, Brandon pointing out that uh, Stasis apparently uh, was the original plan, but then he didn't think it was novel enough, so he swapped out. Yeah, that's very Brandon. I like this Cavern of Souls. I really like this Meltdown. I feel like Meltdown... Um, there's enough like replacements of it with by force and stuff that it doesn't get drafted as many times anymore, but it's obviously yep. very strong. Manifold key, uh, Jukem just kind of like grabbing the things that could conceivably get sniped. Yeah. Prism is good. Uh, Painter Servant is better. Yeah. Uh, and Prismari Command is really good. I know that's something that all of us coming out of Strixhaven were high on in the format. Yeah, it has. It's again so much versatility. Like none of the things are good. You're never happy paying three mana for those two effects, but it, when you have a choice between all of them, it, it becomes a good enough card. Yeah. Chain is so good here. Yeah. Once I saw the, the Hercules go away, I just like, okay, I need Chain. And obviously, yeah. like, I much prefer the Chain loops where you can do it on yourself and kind of do the, the TES lines. Uh, I don't really have that in this, because I most of my things are one-time use. I can bounce a Chrome box, which is nice, but in general, it's, it's pretty offensive. Yeah. Had you considered rebuild? No, not at all. Uh, but okay. I, I, I'm... At this point, thinking I'm a Thassa's Oracle deck, and I don't need, ever need Storm. So, like, I'm not planning on drafting yeah. a single card with Storm at this point in the draft. Yeah. Fire and Ice is another card that the versatility in this format is so good. Yes, I agree. Uh, Polygon's Command is, again, a card I deeply loved in Standard and have not had a chance to draft here, because it's not really a deck I like to draft, but... Yeah. Uh, it's it, it was good in Modern for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Rip Junk. <laughs> Hydroblast and Blue Elemental Blast going here, I think it's a signal of the fact that we know there are at least three red players that are deep in red, yeah. and probably more. So out of curiosity for the Hydroblast, what were you scared of here that you thought you'd need it for? Uh, I saw that Talon is deeply in red, and mm -hmm. I, I'm i just like, I want to be able to answer stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, th th there, was not, there was not a single card that I was really scared of. The Let me scroll back. I remember... I agree, Hagen. Yeah, there was nothing in particular that I was like, I need to be able to answer one card. Uh, yeah, Hyphen, I, I think you're right. Uh, it's... You were drafted, yeah. That's fair. More ramp than control. That's correct, yeah. But, I mean, for my picks, I, I literally just, like, dumped out of my database in the last... Uh, in all of the Discord drafts, what are the cards that are highest picked? And I was just yeah. checking them off as it was going down. I'm like, Hydroblast is still here, and it should be taken by now, kind of according to... Okay. Obviously, yeah. like, here it says around 30, but that's taking into account older times and not just the Discord drafts. So if we yeah. could filter this down, we could see that it's it's well past its time. Ah, uh, Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo, drafting the most fun card in Magic. <laughs> uh, I think the City of Traders is one that should get drafted more, but also gets yeah. misplayed a lot. And I, I, I don't... I'm not at all to say that anyone is. I've seen anyone misplay it, but it's just a card that's really hard to play. Uh, but I mean, if you're going to play it, Jew comes deck is one that it can really do it well. Yeah. Remand also very, very good here. 
True. Oh. The Green Sun Zenith in this in this uh, like Twister list that doesn't have any green creatures is really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, it's, well, it's, we have it's, servants though. Right. So Painter Servant obviously makes them be able to find anything if you name green, yeah. um, which yeah. Steed does. But yeah, uh, we have more cantrips coming off the board. Consider into sleight of hand here, and then Treasure Cruise, the best cantrip coming off. Second yeah. best, I guess, behind Ancestral. Fatal right. Push. Fatal Push is one of those that uh, gets uh, it gets drafted pretty highly. Um, yeah. But I'm not sure how good it is. I think there are certain decks where you really, really want it against, but other decks where it's just really dead, and that's that's fine. I think that is much better in the St. Lotus meta than the Discord meta, since we've gotten much more slow creature grindy. Yes. Um, Tracker is one of my favorite creatures, uh, probably number three uh, behind Siege Rhino and Knight of Reliquary. Yeah, Tireless Tracker is really strong. Yeah. And there's we have our first, or no, we have Ottawa already and Besager, so it's our third one. Yeah. The, yeah. the Sakuzan. So Kenzen, like Barrel Down So Kenzen. Uh, I yeah. But that's a song by the Mountain Goats. Uh, uh yes, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. It, <laughs> it seems like that is what it's uh Judges Familiar is another one. So what's what's interesting to me is that seeing Brandon's deck here, uh Dr. Poo Poo PPMD. Yes. Sorry, PP Poo Poo. Uh, it's very similar to the one that he won St. Lotus with. True, true. There, there's, sorry, the cards that made very good appearances for him in St. Lotus are definitely drafted in this deck. Trinisphere, by the way, Hagen, insane. Love that card in this format. Even better in a Nerza deck. Sorry you didn't get it. <laughs> true. Also, now we saw our third companion. We're, we're actually going to have all three decks play in these as companions, which is very unusual. Normally we see just Lutri. Oh, yeah. But yeah, Jukem's had a really sweet Zerta deck going on, similar to uh, Eric's deck from back in the uh, previous Discord draft, but it's not quite uh, as all-in as Eric's was. Eric kind of had no fallback yeah. whatsoever. Jukem's has a lot more uh, play to it. This Dovin's Veto, uh, nobody else probably will be taking that one right now, no. but it is it is the best card, so you probably want it. Yeah. Once Upon a Time spawned an interesting discussion of how good it actually is. Uh, my claim was I think it's in like the top five cantrips, and other people disagreed. And I think I think I convinced that it's not quite as high as I thought it was, but it still I think is underdrafted. I what, think it is underdrafted, yeah. Um, Mostly that it, it sometimes never gets picked, and that can't be correct to me. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of times where multiple people can be in ding or in green, and nothing happens. Like nobody right. takes it, mm -hmm. which is wild to me. Good old Yog Will. There we go. Yeah, I mean Black Lotus Yog Will, best friends forever. Yeah. Upheaval is super interesting. I don't know what uh, I don't know what the plan is with upheaval at some at this point, um, but I, I, somehow it'll get cast and it will do insane things, and it does. Yeah. Op agent here is very interesting. When I saw opposition agent, I just like put my face in my hands uh, and I was like, I don't. If that card resolves against me, I can't win the game. Like, I in my list I have uh, vampiric, demonic, imperial, uh, wish claw, talisman. Like, I, I have Doomsday. Yeah. Like, I think I have, like, seven cards of Tutor, plus Fetchlands. Yeah. Ceremonious Rejection was, I need to be able to beat uh, Juke Hems. So, yeah. I, I, I want that. I also saw that uh, very likely Eldrazi are going to be happening at some point from other people. So, like, yeah. looking at Steven's Definitely list. Definitely have. Yeah. Splinter Twin. So, there's Ever signaling the Z Rex Arc and the Splinter Twin where he's going. Yeah. I like this natural order. Uh, I think that card is just, just it's just I win button occasionally. So it's really nice. Yeah, it is. The we have Sacred Foundry cleaning up. I don't know if it's exactly the last one, but it's it's we're running yeah. low on the the shock lands at this point. Yeah, once the non blue ones start going, it's it's about time. Voltaic he was an interesting one to me because I understand you want redundant pieces. Right. Um I think it's, I mean, you you want redundant pieces, you have the Time Vault already, which you want both with. You're probably yeah. not going to be running, if you're running Zerda, not running as many tutors for them. Uh, and also the, uh, you you have the Zerda plus the uh, Monolith combo. So yeah, the keys are ridiculous yeah. with the combo, with the with yeah. Monoliths. Sulfurous Springs. Some he, of the best OG of here, and I love that card. Yeah, I mean, the Sulfur Springs, the Foglio with mm -hmm. the yeah, that's great. 
the heart of Kieran really blew me away. I was like, whoa, I've not, I've not thought about that for VRD, but it seems very strong to me. Uh, Hyphen makes a good point. Um, plan with upheaval is to ramp with elves and crypt, then play upheaval answers any board state. It's also good with fast bond. Yeah. Oh, that, that's reasonable with fast bond. It's ridiculous. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, yeah, rip, rip that demon for sure. Get the dryad arbor to make sure no one snipes it underneath the green sun's. Yeah, end. that's definitely true. Jew. Uh, hyphen with the Terastodon. I love Terastodon in this format. I would almost always take it over like Progenitus or any of the other typical natural order targets. Yeah, I mean, especially with the with <laughs> once we know that there's an upheaval in this deck, it's, it becomes really good. Um, yeah. But yeah, collective oh, brutality. I. Uh, just read today for the first time and apparently that card only takes it to sorceries not non-creatures uh, uh so that, that yes or not yeah I, I, thought, I thought it also i think it's object non-creature non-land and that is not accurate nope. so that is not i think collective brutality is still a fine card for me but it's not quite as good as i thought it was yeah vendetta and croxa so now we're seeing this is, is truly becoming a grixis deck versus a yeah. blue red splashing yeah Questing Beast, my my pick for number one creature, number one green creature. Once you exclude the mana dorks and, and often multicolored. Yeah, yeah. I think Hex Drinker, Questing Beast, and Elder Gargaroth are all right in that same vein for me. I have Elder Gargaroth on a tier below, but I could be wrong about that. Mostly just like I, just I, like I don't the... like playing things that don't do anything when they happen. Yeah, I I just like the card advantage a lot and creature heavy metagames, which I think Saint Lotus is leading. It's much much better, I think. Den of the Bugbear, I love. Same with Gideon. Gideon is one of my favorite walkers in the format. Yeah, uh, Gideon does a lot of does a lot of really strong things. Uh, yeah. it just being able to pump out a creature every turn. It's similar to the Nissa that we often see Brandon go for. Um, yeah, I, he really likes having that value engine, right? Like, it, yeah. I'm surprised we aren't going to see any Garrick uh, flip walker out of him. But that that kind of uh, is all in the same energy. Yeah. I, I'm not going to lie, when Hagen took Spirit of the Labyrinth for a second, when I saw it in Discord, I was like, Spirit of the Night? Are we special <laughs> summoning in magic? <laughs> that would be very funny. Yeah. Let's see if I can spell it correctly. Nope. It is, it's never been drafted. I'm sorry. Mm, tragic. Even Mind Sensor, another card that I probably can't yeah. beat. Uh, I managed to squeak out a win against it because I was tutoring for like any mana source, and it was fine. I was just like, oh, I, I, need, yeah. I need to get another mana source for Gush. Yeah. Crystal Vein, so Jukems really wants all the soul lands. Yep. Well, with as early as Tomb went, uh, you know what, four? I, I think that makes sense. Sure. Lose Focus is so good. I agree. Uh, it, this is probably about where it goes. I feel like it should be drafted higher. This so. just all those cards feel so replaceable to me like obviously this is very good but i think it's just like yeah. this versus mana leak versus misdirect or not misdirection uh miscalculation there's so many of those cards yeah. that like are kind of sixes at this point that i think that that slot That's is weird. open hyphen taking past infestation here was really interesting to me i thought uh there was an interesting conversation in discord about that versus um uh reclamation sage and i think that there's like arguments for both and they're good in different decks but uh yeah. it, it's a card that i hadn't really thought about and i think is very reasonable to claim is better than uh, it's the than the actual Reclamation Sage. Yeah. Thought Scour felt pretty sad to me. It's obviously like Mental Note exists, as you can see. Um, yeah. But the fact that it's both good against me with my three top deck tutors and also um, Mental Note. And Enabler, is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mental Note is, is good for Doomsday Piles, but also really annoying when to draw into Doomsday Piles sometimes. So whereas mm -hmm. Thought Scour, you've been able to just not mill your two cards can be really useful. Yeah. Because, yeah, casting a mental note when someone has a Leyland of the Void in play and you only win condition is a is a Thassa's Oracle can be very bad. Uh, I agree with you, Steve. I think it's much better. Yeah, exactly, Hyphen. It just scales so well late game. Uh, just really good. Shatter Skull Smashing is a really cool one. I, I, I haven't seen that card get drafted a lot. I'm sure it has been. Um, but all, all those flip lands have a pretty low cost, and uh, yeah, they have they have a lot of versatility. Yeah. In Vendor's Fair, I've seen do disgusting things in VRD. That I card did. feels like, obviously not many decks want it, but the ones that do, it just goes insane. Also, the fact that I've seen it do insane things, even though most people forget about the gain of lifeline. <laughs> yes. Everyone forgets that exists. 
Well, but then, like that one life, like over seven turns is surprisingly relevant, and even two or three turns can be huge. The fact that you need metal craft for it, it's just like such a weird, like there's there's a lot of layers to why people forget about that. Yeah. Flame Blitz is a card that uh, I don't think gets drafted enough, mostly because people forget it exists, but it is yeah. so strong if anyone's in the Walker's deck. Yeah, absolutely. Leyline and Helm from Brandon. Brandon was actually texting me, telling me I should take Leyline and Helm in my, de my deck. Um, yeah. Not knowing that I was actually planning on playing the Lurus, so I couldn't do it. Um, ah, yeah, fair. But yeah, he was basically just like, you're an idiot, you should be taking these cards. And I, I think that like there's a very reasonable argument that that's probably correct versus playing Lurus as a companion, but it's less fun, so I didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Chu just goes, yeah, I didn't remember that one so far. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. And here, here's the dagger pick from Hyphen, taking Demonic Consultation. Yeah, the Consultation, when I saw that, I was like, oh, that is brutal. Yeah, so I, I took, I think, I'm going to follow here. I took roughly 24 hours uh, between that pick and the next one. Um, just because this is where, like, if we were sitting around a table, I think that taking that hate pick is, just throws off everything so much. It's, like, really strong. When you have infinite yeah. time to make picks, I think it, it becomes I, a lot less interesting because it's kind of like I can just sit there and, like, rebuild the deck and then play Test on a Cockatrice solo 12 times. Um, yeah, exactly. You have a lot more time to recover, and it's a lot more, yeah. like, you know, I... It's forgiving. I also think the, like, table feedback on that is just great. Totally. Uh, part of the environment for me, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think the consultation pick, obviously, like, it's very strong with Thassa's Oracle, but we kind of, I went and sat there and, like, built three different lists. I had a Ad Nauseam Angel's Grace list. I had a, uh, I had the Storm list that you can see I'm pivoting into right now. Uh, and I also ended up building a, uh, I, I had a, like, unearth list um, yeah oh I, I turned tainted pact as well even with the island to just see if i could make it work um and parallax wait no what's what's the one that flips over flips your library and graveyard uh paradigm shift paradigm shift yeah i, I tried building one yeah. of those and none of them were very good um so i just like okay i'll do the storm thing instead and we'll yeah. see how that goes but that's kind of i i could sit there and i literally like I sit there, sat there with Cockatrice doing just gold fishing. I did at least eight eight games with each of those decks just to like see which direction do I want to go, which is something you yeah. can never do if you're sitting at a table and you have like 30 seconds to make a pick. So yeah, definitely really interesting. I don't know what the right choice is, um, but yeah. And I, I, I don't want to dive super deep in the hate picks thing because I seriously think it's like a two hour long conversation that I'm excited to have later. Um, uh, same actually. Because I like I, I, I have a picture and article that has lots of graphs and math and stuff about about yeah. where I think it's reasonable and not, but I think it's I think there's a super deep conversation there. So uh, I agree with Hyphen's stance there. Um, I do have one question about this. When you yeah. say you audible in the brain freeze, Tainted Pact and Divining Witch weren't considerations for you at all, or you just wanted the optimal version of it? Uh, so, so Tainted Pact, I couldn't draft because I had Gush, so I needed to run enough island density. I was going to run seven islands at the end of it, and I tried with Tainted Pact and keeping the island count in place, uh, and it just did not work. Like, I, I, could not, I couldn't reliably draw more than three cards, or check more than three cards off of it, so it just wasn't strong enough. Um, yeah. And then the... As of right now, my list is creatureless. The only creature in it is the Lurus Companion uh, in the main yeah, deck. Sure. So I didn't yeah. want to introduce the ability for people's removal. That's my interaction to be relevant. Yeah, yeah. I did have Divine English on my list of considerations, but I didn't take yeah. it for that reason. So, but yeah, no, I, I, that that was Divine Witch was also on there. It's like okay, if I if I want this effect, I can take it in on the sideboard and kind of do a kind of shell game with people. But I didn't. Yeah. I didn't really want to dive into that if I didn't have to. Oh, Goblin Guide. The classic. It, and I took Brain Freeze here, obviously, once I decided to go in the Storm, because I see that there's somebody that's taken Underworld Breach, and they have a good chance of wanting it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that Breach got played or not, or like what, what the plan is with it, but I assume that Brain Freeze or Thassa's Oracle were involved at some point. And there's the chill. Mm -hmm. Every, you have no chill. Chill was not very good in our match. It was fine. Uh, like It slowed yeah. things down by a turn, but it wasn't it wasn't the backbreaker that something like Gloom is. Um, yeah. So I, I am lower on chill against non-solo red decks than I was before this draft. That's fair. Hall of the Storm Giants is one of my favorite win conditions for a control deck in this format. Yeah. It is, like, if you are hard control, that card is so good. Not Hall of Heliod's Generosity. Let's try again. Yeah. <laughs> I should take my own, uh, own advice and copy and paste things out of here. <laughs> 
Sorry to tilt you so much. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that we're now in the sort of the meat combo, Brandon. I appreciate that. Yeah. This, this is, I was talking to, I don't remember who I was talking to when I was playing the draft against them, but they were like, Brandon's decks are impossible to play against because there's 12 different ways he can beat you and you can't sideboard against him. He's just like, yeah. at any point, a random deck is going to come against you and it's not like a two-card Monty type situation. It's just like, actually, there are three decks slapped together that have a bunch of synergies you didn't think about, but Brandon <laughs> has been thinking about in the back of his head for ages. Like, I'm just there baffled is. at all the little micro synergies he turns into decks that are playable. And I just look at them and it's like yep. piles of very good cards. Thought not seer, yeah. There, there's the there's now we know yeah. we are in the Eldrazi and Texas list. I like Jukem's picking up the Chromatic Star and Chromatic Sphere. Uh, Sphere is obviously an old school Doomsday win, but I was I didn't have it on my list. It wasn't a thing yeah. I needed. Yeah, value reach, but Stephen called out. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. I've not yeah. even considered it because that's not how I think, but <laughs> it's, it's a cool idea. Spell Snare is a card that I, I I'm not gonna say it's underdrafted, but it's it is a very strong card. I've yeah. never I've never been disappointed having a spell snare in my deck, and I often am disappointed that I don't have access to it. Yeah, seed seed time is another one that I like a lot for sideboard or otherwise. I deeply love seed time. I think it's yeah. really really strong. Uh, so anyone in chat, this this list that's floating around on Twitter reminds me of Brandon's decks. And this is a modern list. It's hilarious. And here's, of course, the Doomsday. Yep. Uh, Claim to Fame was amazing and standard. Has it been drafted much? No. It's been drafted okay. one time, exactly one time, in this draft. Okay. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, I think that the fact that Reanimate exists, Unearth exists, there, there's a bunch of other cards that are kind of yeah. good, so you have to really want both halves, halves of the combo here. That's fair, yeah. I take Doomsday here because I'm just like, well, if Hyphen's going to hate pick uh, Demonic Consultation, he might just like say, I'm going to take, as soon as you pick a lane, you're going to, I'll take the card out of your lane. So that's where I take Doomsday <laughs> earlier than I need yeah. to. Um, because that's a card I really can't win without. Like, I need it in my deck. Yeah. Mystic Remora uh, felt very strong into a lot of these lists, and my list can be pretty slow. Now that I know I'm not on the consult line anymore, I'm not going to yeah. have as many turn one wins. I'm going to be closer to turn three. It's kind of an average from my gold fishing. So having Remora for those first few turns to just chill and let things settle and let me set up with just land drop, land drop, land drop, it kind of feels like playing Solidarity. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, Hyphen, that makes sense. I mean, there's a couple of, like, there's no hard control lists, right? Like, you seem to be at the beginning one of the more hard control lists, and that sort of shifted as things went on. Um, right. Aeon's Torn was a very Brandon pick there. Uh, yeah. I don't know what's happening, but yeah <laughs> right i, I nope. assume it's just because now that i've taken brain freeze the eldrazi titans have to come off the table so brandon takes the best one yeah that's fair but i think that's an anti-mill card is my assumption yeah yeah that's fair obero is great obviously with uh fast bond um mm -hmm. so presumably there's gonna be something else happening that will, <laughs> will make that good matter shaper battlefield forge okay steven taking the pain lands to make that all work and there's a show and tell, so the apparently not. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yep, very, very Brandon pick. You should build that list I linked, by the way. Uh. I like this Golos, though. That Golos, having an activated ability, means you can play it with the all artifact deck. Yep. And you can go find Academy with it. It's pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Uh, this this I think is the most I've ever seen cards like Steel Sabotage in an old draft in, in any of the one any of the discords I can recall. Yeah. Uh, True Name Nemesis is interesting to me. That has fallen so out of favor. Mm -hmm. I think it used to be in the this... best blue creature. It was that or Snapcaster Mage, but yeah, now it's thirty six is not unreasonable for where it is. Yeah, the Steel Sabotage. I, I took uh, Swan Song pretty early. Um, yeah, that's where you did. And well, I Swan Song, that... I think, it's taken a lot more yeah. than the others. I agree. Uh, it's it's seen as almost main boardable. So mm -hmm. yeah, that absolutely hyphen. I think that's yeah. I think hope of Europer because can I'm playing no creatures in the main deck. They have to take out their side, their creature removal. So yeah. either they leave it in and like have it be pretty bad against me, or I get to just walk through three counter spells in one turn. Yeah. There's my senses. Divining top and thirty seventh. Yeah. <laughs> they're uh, fun. They're fun. Popper. Yeah. I like that card for double doomsday lines and legacy, but it's it's not really gonna do that here. You're mostly just yeah. a store draw. Uh, in 
endurance is so sick. And Hagen took Fury and Solitude pretty early, so I think this was the next elemental we had, not till 37. Flash Flood, I love that card so much. I think it's... Uh, it doesn't get drafted very much, um, and I think it's just that red permanents have... Like, a lot of times the red burn deck traditionally didn't play creatures, and now it needs to because it's better. Um, yeah. So I think it's, it like has a good reason to exist now that it didn't before, um, especially when Hydro sure. Blast and like when the two blasts are gone. Summer Bloom, it's so sweet seeing uh, Titan get drafted. Mm -hmm. I like this Aether Spellbomb. I really kept thinking about whether I wanted Nihil Spellbomb on my list. Uh, I ended up not doing it because Talon decided not to go into a reanimator deck, but that was kind of like... That was my card. I'm just like, as soon as somebody decides they're going to take Grizzled Brand, I'm going to draw, I'm going to take um, Nile Spellbomb. I got a little nervous that, that Jukems was going to take it. Hyphen, I think that's probably correct. Flash Flood and Active Volcano. Good good eye there, Pop. Uh, Retrofitter Foundry is it, wild that that doesn't get taken more. Yeah, it, it's... It is such a generically powerful card. It's so slow. I, I, I agree that it's very good, but it's, again, yeah. a card that, like, two decks want, maybe, at most, That's and it's very slow. God, I love Tireless Provisioner. Is this the is this the one that naturalizes when it attacks? Uh, Food or Treasure on Landfall. Oh, okay, no, not at all the one I was thinking about. I was thinking of With Fast card. Bond, that's pretty good, because mm -hmm. it's extra infinite without Zurin. Right, uh, and presumably you're paying one life for each of them. You're generating yeah. a treasure or food with each of those. Yeah. So it's theoretically cancels out, right? Yeah. If you generate treasure, treasure, food, crack mm -hmm. them to heal. So yeah. I don't. I don't know. I'm, I'm not gonna try to solve Steve's deck, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Envelop another card that I think is criminally, criminally under, probably known about. Uh, I, that card's I, great. I started. Uh, I started complaining in chat about this card and somebody else was saying I wanted to take uh, invasive surgery because it's a strictly better envelope other than the art. Yeah. Both arts very yeah. good, but there's my wish claw talisman further making all of the like mental note or the, the thought scour uh, and the tutor killers really bad for me. Yeah. I love his temporal yeah, spring. Once you're in blue green, it's just so strong, even with the sorcery. Yeah. I can't decide if I love or hate the art for Temporal Spring. It's like just so simple <laughs> and kind of does what it says, but. Yeah. Misdirection is, is very strong. I don't know if it's great in this draft specifically because there aren't as many counterspell decks. There's kind of, it's very good on his hyphen. Uh, and then yeah. I think there's a lot of other decks where you kind of can, you won't want it, but who knows? Uh, I think Spyglass is probably my favorite of those effects. Uh, and it's not particularly close. I like Pithy Needle more, mostly because it's tutorable with like Trinket Mage and uh, Saga. And Saga. Yeah. But yeah, I think Sorcerer Spyglass is way more versatile. I, I guess also, granted, we have perfect information in these drafts, so we yes. know. So that helps a little bit. Mm -hmm. oh. it, it does nice to know which fetch line to turn off, though. Yeah. Tamer Priest and Displacer, a match made in heaven. And then there's a second Eugene. Eugene the Sprite Dragoon. Yeah, this Spyglass, actually, I'm curious if that uh, if that gets taken... Okay, it gets taken about half the time. Okay, yeah. But still pretty early when it does. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like 39 to, 50, to 46, I think, is about where I want to be. Sky Turtle, I was so glad to see this get taken. I love this card. I don't know how good it is. But man, is it fun. It's it's incredibly fun. I've been really enjoying yeah. watching. The Professor did a deck using Sky Turtles uh, and just like all these channel creatures that then get reanimated into play in Standard. And it's, it's sure terrible, yeah. but it showed me that this card has a ton of versatility in it. Yeah. Basically a two mana unsummon with a three mana uh, uh, regrowth at instant speed right. might be good enough on its own. Yeah. I take Cabal Ritual there. This is, again, after having lost the consult, I'm like, I need to be able to win after casting Ad Nauseam. And I found myself in playtesting getting stuck on two mana a lot, where I would mm -hmm. Ad Nauseam and then not be able to get to the third mana to cast Yawgmoth's Will. 
Uh, so getting Cabal Ritual was was my how what card do I have that costs one or two zero one or two that can get me to an extra mana in these yeah. colors and Cabal Ritual is the only one I could figure out. I did not want that card because it hits me for two and it most of the time only draws uh, only generates one mana. But I, from the very beginning, this was an ad nauseum deck and happened to play Doomsday and that's that was the plan all along. Okay, yeah. Seeds of Innocence is another reserve list card that gets under that's underplayed in Commander. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know. How, I don't know how underplayed it is here, but uh, it's really strong. It's great in this meta. Yeah, and particularly uh, against Jukems, right? Yeah. Jotty Yashu. Now, now we're starting to get into the silliness. <laughs> Chromatic Orrery, I don't think has ever been taken before, has it? Uh, I don't think so. It's super expensive. Yeah. Which, Seven again, in an outlet, you know. Right, which... yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, turn your infinite mana into infinite draw. Yeah. Creeping Corrosion as well. Interesting. I uh, like Corrosion a lot. Yeah. I, I would expect that, that Seeds is good enough, but if, yeah, maybe four manas, you want the same effect? Yeah. Karn Liberated. Uh, that's a late Karn Liberated. Like, obviously, like, only one deck wants it usually, but still, like, that's yeah. a pretty late one. It is your generic answer any permanent, which I think is worth it on its own. Mm-hmm. Um, Eternal Scourge is really interesting here. Steven and I talked about it for a while. Um, I I was like, are, are you trying to do the food chain thing? Like, is there something I'm not seeing here? And he's like, no, it's just, yeah. it, it can get cast off Eldrazi Temple. It's a beater that comes back over and over again. It, it's yep. really strong on its own. And yeah, it makes sense to me. Brandon took Teferi. Uh, but does not have the doesn't have the time vault combo with it. Yeah. So I, I don't I haven't had a chance to talk to Brandon about why I took this card or what the plan is with it, but I'm sure there's some uh, there's it's lots of little synergies I'm already seeing, but I, I don't know if there's a slight yeah. reason for it. And there's there's my boy. Thank you, hyphen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I appreciate that. And what what would that be, Mr. Hagen? What is the best part? Massacre is such a good card. Uh, it's very good against Steven, and I was looking at that list, and I'm like, well... How do I beat this? <laughs> right. Like, all, it doesn't actually kill very many creatures in his deck, but it kills all the creatures I care about. Everything in his deck has one toughness that I care about, and there's a lot of three t- three toughness creatures that will kill me very quickly, but if I... Yeah. That's not why I'm playing Massacre. I'm playing Massacre as a, let's phase out the board for one turn. Yeah. Uh, Sudden Edict is another very, very good card. Uh, totally agree. In this format. Um... Raise the especially with this metagame very very good uh effigy was interesting obviously it gives extra reach which is kind of what this deck wants with darcy ragavan and stuff like that because you're going to be like beating incrementally and then just having the destroyed target artifact upside um i took takanuma yeah th- okay. this is this is a doomsday pile uh that you you can discard it uh and then get back your thassa's oracle so it can dig through discard but it also yeah. just um it, it doesn't have to actually be one of the creatures that is in the three cards so you can use it if somebody else mills your Thassa's Oracle early to get it back, and you don't want to have to yeah. go through a Yawgwath line. Also, it's incredibly free to run, because it's just a swamp. Yeah. But I haven't actually used it yet, but that's why it's kind of like, in the really grindy matchup, Takanuma can matter. So we'll see when I yeah. have a hyphen if it matters. I like this Rafelos. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, does hyphen have the trop as well? I'm just looking at the actual number of uh, forests in the list. Yeah, there's a, there's yes. a drop, but yep, drop. not the breeding pool, right? Yeah, breeding Correct. pool only does D. Okay. Yeah. Firebolt by Evers is uh, is a pick that I mean that's that's an old school pick for sure. I love it. Uh, I also like that the artifact lands are starting to get taken more and more. Um, the, the dual ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think tap lines are very bad, but I understand why you need them sometimes. Well, and I, I think in this meta, it's not a particularly fast meta. Right. Um, so I think it's okay here. Outland Liberator is another one that I absolutely love. That card does insane work. Yeah, um, can't agree more. Maddening Hex is a card that I was super uh, excited and terrified about. Like, yeah. it just ends some games. Yeah. So he just takes two cards against my deck. Um, very polite of him. But yeah, Outland Liberator, I agree, is... This is a card that I, I'm surprised goes 44th, and I think it's just because there are often not that many green decks at the table. Yep. But 
I mean, what's what's the other? There's a, a Kasali Pride Mage was drafted for yeah. a long time, and this is just better than that. Better than that, By yeah, a lot. absolutely. It, it's Trigon Predator with Kasali Pride Mage on it, which is great. Right, it's like two vintage All Stars from the mid two thousands. And there's the oh third yeah, Titan. It's, it's, that that is fair, Hagen. It is a value tinker list. It's a, because oh. it's a second stone forge. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, Tinker for Orrery, play Teferi with it, and then play your entire hand. Oh, uh, Steven, Steven asks about the Yavamaya with the yeah. fellows. I didn't even think about that. That's very good. Yeah. And here's the Spice in my 44th pick, Death Wish. Yeah, Death Wish. Love it has it. been very strong. Uh, yeah, that was honestly, and I remember playing it in Extended uh, in Zubera Storm, mm -hmm. and it was just wild how good that card was. Absolutely nutter butters. And yeah, there's the Tendrils now that I've kind of forced everyone into taking the Eldrazi. I wanted to have yeah. the alternate win con. I actually think that most of the time I have enough mana, having an arbitrary amount of mana, that I don't need the brain freeze. But reaching mm -hmm. 10 storm is, is harder than reaching 8 storm, which is what you need in game one. Yeah. Arcane Denial is a card that has fallen a lot recently, for good reason, I think. I think yeah. there's enough, kind of what we were talking about earlier, there's just so many um, other, so many other two mana spells at this point. But yeah. Arcane Denial still says counter target spell on it. I also don't like counters that give my opponent resources because the whole point is I want to deny them those. So get out of here. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously the cute lines where you counter your own thing, but yeah, in general, I, I agree. But I think this, this card is not for the grindy matchups. Yeah. Course of Portal, Brandon continuing to take EDH All Stars. <laughs> no Altar of the Brood. I'm still disappointed. The uh, Staff of Domination, it, it, it would, for your infinite win con, there's obviously a Retrofitter Foundry, Staff of Domination, and. Uh, did was was not Hangerback Walker the other one Walking Ballista Walking Ballista also yeah he took the list already yeah so he had all of them okay uh, the interesting thing here and I'm curious we'll wait till after this pick while you're in the chat Mr. Kems uh, no Metal Worker was interesting Ooh. to me I guess I, I can obviously he's here he can answer for himself my anticipation is that yeah. it's too slow right like casting Metal Worker that... on turn two and then turn three trying to go off that would be my guess as well um i oh. i guess sorry this this meta is fast it's explosive i don't know how fast and consistent it is okay you just don't like it that's fine um i just wasn't sure and of course not right. brandon picking the crabs but somebody else did you know the white tail is a common deer oh god it's <laughs> every terrible. time every time the donovan special yeah that's fair yeah, your CMC is much lower because you're not on like a blight seal package or anything. Unravel is such a good card. It's very good, and uh, it just the fact that it forced them to shuffle too. There's just so many, so many upsides to it. Yeah. Uh, here's my spicy pick. This is one okay. that I originally had much higher, and then I I started looking at the lists, and it's it's really only good against the non counter spell lists. I did yeah. manage to pull off the dream with it once, and it was ridiculous. But like, if somebody is a first striker and a regular creature, like things end very badly for you if they have a counter spell things yeah. end very badly for you if you are in a doomsday pile things end very badly there's just so many ways in which this card is yeah. terrible but i think it's good enough to be drafted at least once so i wanted to take yeah. it but you know a stunning reversal is one that i think has potentially built around in the same way angel's grace does yeah i i agree with that because if you uh, cast any reversal and then cast ad nauseum you just uh you just add nauseum all the way down. You lose the yep. game immediately, and then draw the last seven cards of your deck. So you just draw yeah. up to the seven, um, and then ancient grudge is the last pick. Yeah. So after the draft was done, how did you feel about your chances? Uh, so prior to pick thirty-two or whatever, I I was like, I feel like my deck is very very good, like probably the best VRD yeah. deck I've drafted ever. Um, yeah. After the end of the draft, I felt like it was. A turn slower than I had been before, but probably still the best deck I've drafted. Okay. So I, I, I think it's less fun than my the the like Liliana deck I drafted a long time ago. Um, yeah. But I think it's better if that makes sense. It's also no. just like by far the hardest deck I've like now that Death Wishes in the deck, it just like became it it up leveled by a complete order of magnitude how hard it is to play. So I just like yeah, feel freaking exhausted at the end of every game. Yeah. Um, because like there's times where I'm just sitting there like. 
I, I actually uh, recorded everyone on my matches. So after we posted this, I'm going to go through and commentate all of my matches and just like talk through what I'm thinking about for all of them. Okay. But like, there's times where I'm sitting there for 90 seconds trying to just like. What's my building, line? Yeah, like Doomsday piles yeah. are one or the, the the easy part of it, right? Like, build, let me build yeah. a five for Doomsday pile. But like thinking about like how do I can I get to enough mana to death wish for an imperial seal that I sideboarded out so that I can put it on top and draw to it? Like th there was a line against yeah. Steven where I I literally was one mana away from being able to do that of like uh and I would have been at I would have been at two life and uh, zero mana in pool and been able to tendrils in for exact. It was just like, but oh, it, there's so many lines that are really hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that is the draft. So thanks everybody for hanging out with us. Obviously, yeah, like, appreciate that. Uh, let's talk through the decks a little more before we fully sign off. But um, yeah, absolutely. Let us know what you think about this format. If if this is something that we want to see more of, uh, obviously drafts are the most fun part of VRDs. Um, yeah. So if, if this is something that is interesting, I'd, I'd love to go back and see kind of the older Discord drafts that I didn't pay attention to, and just commentate them and talk through them all. So. This has been a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, what do you think, Jason, looking at these lists? Obviously, you weren't involved in this. Which of them stand out to you? Which ones are you excited about? Things like that. So the thing that stands out to me the most here is everyone pretty much stayed in their lane. Uh, there wasn't a lot of... I mean, there were a couple of audibles here and there. Brandon evidently audibled into a uh, artifact deck at some point. But by and large, it seems like, and you guys in chat can correct me if I'm wrong, from sitting here, everyone pretty much had their idea. They stuck with it. They were very disciplined and did not get scared away by a few picks. Obviously, you wanted the consultation line, but you still managed to be Doomsday Adnos, which was kind of what you wanted to begin with. Yeah. Uh, Hyphen, you were one that, uh, yeah, audible out of stasis. Hyphen, yours was kind of interesting to me because we started out as seemingly like control list and then just ended up on Simic good stuff, I feel like. Uh, starting with the hard control package, force, mana drain, force negation, and then you back it up with Oko, V-Click, Hex Drinker. It's just like mono card advantage the deck, uh, which to me, I know, sorry to say this going into your matchup, is probably in a vacuum my favorite deck in the draft, and I think the best in terms of consistent power level. Um I agree just with Jukem's my... analysis here that basically the first ten picks we're kind of sorting out where everyone's lane is in, and then we just kind of stuck it around in it. I do, yeah. I do think Hyphen did the best Mason impression, and I mean that with like the most compliment I can give. In that, yeah. just kind of, I'm going to take the best card available and then see where that leads me. Like I think that I'm yeah. really impressed, kind of, by where how the way Hyphen drafted. It's the way I want to draft um, when I don't have a yeah. Black Lotus Doomsday opportunity. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think it's just like I think it is uh, inarguably the best way to do VRD if you're trying to win. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Yeah, I guess not hard control, but yeah, control magic that, yeah, you're right. You're in a ramp list that just you have interaction. Um, I think the seeing Crucible Strip might not go to a fast bond list makes me a little sad, <laughs> uh, but it is what it is. Sure. Um, I, I think, again, this showcases Brandon's list. Uh, walkers and hyphenated, obviously, we know Oko is just generically powerful. Uh, walkers are probably the best source of card advantage in the format overall. Mm -hmm. I think just as, like, general rule, you'll get more value out of walkers than most other permanent types. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see how decks that go mono walkers fare. Uh, I'd be curious to see if when we do City Champs, if Mason or one of the shy boys tries to go for mono walker list just to stomp on Brandon's territory, but we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Currency Converter is a card that it, it's cool to see in a not dedicated deck, but just kind of in a deck that let's yeah. see how good it is, right? Like once you have a uh, mirror breaker and, and a bunch of the other fabled mirror breaker and things, it probably yeah. is just good enough on its own. Um, but I'm, I'm very interested in this card. I think it has the potential to go way up or way down in VRD kind of stats eventually. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's, Really good engine. God Pharaoh Statue is another one that I think is really, really good, and I think underdrafted because for the long grindy games, I mean, the inevitability is just really good. It's also very much a Brandon special, so you know. Yeah, I was forced to Imperial Seal, but uh, knowing that Brandon had Tinker in hand, and uh, I didn't like. Uh, there was a ley line in play, so I like got the line. I got the a chain of vapor that could answer the. Uh, 
the helm so I could just like bounce the ley line in response to the helm coming in and uh, in response to the helm trigger and have not lose the game. Um, yeah. And he instead tutored for God Pharaoh statue and I proceeded to lose the game because I couldn't beat that card. Yeah. I two two mana and I will say this till my face turns blue. Uh, I think VRD is the single most mana intensive format. Ooh. Uh, you have to be so tight and so efficient most of the time that something like Dovin Hand, you know, effects like that, Glow Riders, Thalias, Thorns, are so much more impactful in this format than any other format because of the fact that it's singleton. And you don't have the density that you do in EDH to be able to make up for that. Sure. Uh, because... And you don't have the Canadian Highlander bonus where you, you, don't, you don't get every mox, right? I guess you don't no. get there either, but you do get other replacement. You get better fetches, things like that. Like, yeah. the fact that you have one mox in your deck means that you can't get out from underneath them as easily. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I, I think so cards like, you know, God Pharaoh Statue, Trinisphere is a huge one. Any of those, I think, are very, very undervalued in this format. I, I think it is so much more important to be mana efficient and to wisely increment your advantage out in this than any other format. So I, I think that cards like that are huge. Yeah, T Talon's List is one that I'm... I, I feel like Blue-Red was so... Like Blue-Red Tempo was so good and ready to go. Uh, mm -hmm. And the fact that no one else was in black felt like it was an easy pivot into it. But I, I, I genuinely don't know whether it would be better or worse without the black. Uh, and I, think, yeah. I don't think there's a way to know, right? There's no way to A-B test that. But that's one that, I'm like, uh, this list looked good where it ended up. And I'm actually, like, very yeah. impressed by a lot of the picks. Like, the Dark Confidant and a lot of those other ones are very strong. Um, yeah. Once you're in black. But I, I just don't... I'm very curious to know whether the pivot to black is something that uh, he is happy with at the end of the day or not. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's very, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, because, again, like, you got the generically powerful Grixis cards because nobody else did. Right. Uh, I don't know what you lost out on in blue by doing that is the thing. I don't think, like, okay, you didn't get Merc tied. Uh, Ledger Shredder was drafted by somebody else, but, like, what, if I were in blue-red, iteration was gone, what would I have taken over Coligan's command? So to me, I think it was a very good pivot. Um, I mean, but I maybe twin, they're wrong. Maybe twin is the answer, right? That's, yeah, uh, twi I, Twin probably is the answer. Yeah, you're right. But I, I don't know. I would have to like really look at it, and I would have to think about that yeah. type of list a lot more. But yeah, I, I don't know. Brandon's list with his heart of Kieran really was yeah. very impressive to me. So. Yep. Cool. Any last closing thoughts? Uh, no. Excited to see how the next couple Discord drafts go. Yeah, and same. I've been to some of the older ones as well. And courtesy of everyone in the chat, uh, I would love to see statistics just based on our current.